Hey guys, what's up? Misha from GGD here, and today we're gonna talk about gain. I've had a lot of people asking me about how I use gain. How much should I use? How should I use it to get the sound that I want? In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how I approach that and how you can use gain to get different results in different contexts. All right, guys, so let's talk about gain. I made a little clip here, and I'm gonna show you how I use different levels of gain to get the effect I want. Let's jump right in. Skipping ahead, so that's kind of uh, the the heavier, more gainy tone. That's more of a tighter tone, a little less gain. Uh, and then over here. That is even less gain and using this uh, second position and then even less gain. All right, so that's a basic overview of what we're going to talk about. Now let's look at this in depth. So let's start with a gainy sound. How do I dial in a sort of, you know, a, a tone for something like this? You know, listen to just the guitars. So it's very saturated, right? So for this, I'm using the Axe FX right now. Uh, appropriately named Gainy Rhythm. Um, and uh, for the cab, I'm actually using a uh, beta version of something we're working on. So the final version may look a little different probably be a lot smaller because it's going to take up the whole screen as you can see uh it's this uh zilla ir thing um it's combo i really like greenback h and v30 um nolly captured all these he's the best nolly's the best we all know that and these ir sound awesome and aggressive and hi-fi anyways that is the signal chain we're going to use the axe effect so i can um kind of show you what's going on so again my tone is usually very simple uh as you can see it's just uh Tube screener style overdrive into a uh, 5150 simulation here. Um, and let's hear it without the drive. So we're getting a fair bit of saturation there, but it's very flubby. The, the drive tightens it up. And what I'm usually aiming for with this is trying to hit it I'm, when I want something that's kind of gainy, I will use more gain than, than some people would like or some people would use, but I wanted to saturate a certain way on the palm mutes, which sort of like blooms, you know? If you don't use as much gain, you lose that. Sounds a little anemic there, so, you know, I could even add a bit more to exaggerate. That's where you get that purr from. Um, I'm running the input trim a little low on this. The input's being boosted, bright switch on. You know, like, there's there's a lot of gain on this, for sure. Uh, and I am picking fairly hard. So, you know, that's where you get that sort of sound. Uh, these riffs, I just wrote, like, last night, so I'm not great at tracking them but let's just let's just play around let's see what happens anyways you can hear like you get this uh this wonderful saturation especially on these like dirty sort of chords And you'll sort of lose that on a, on a tighter sound, 
but tighter sounds have their place, especially if you want more note definition. So this riff here, you can hear the notes pup, uh, punch through a little bit more. So uh, I have this tighter rhythm. Same thing. I'm just running uh, less gain. It's a lot tighter. And this is where a lot of people might say they want their gain. It almost sounds like too little. Your right hand does have to do the work. So if you pick a little lighter, you may want to use a bit more gain. Make up for it. But really that sound comes, I think, from having very little gain and really digging in. So let's track that. Again, probably not going to track this super tight. I apologize, but... This is a demo of gain, not of my skills. For this next one, I want these ringing chords. So, all right, let's delete that. We don't need to. I mean, we could listen if you want. Nice and tight, right? Uh, the next part, though, has these ringing chords. And I really wanted on the, uh, the tom hits for that to sound kind of massive. You can hear it. That kind of, uh, that kind of messy quality. So, this is where I would go back to the gainy rhythm, because you can really get that. And, you know, I don't need to track every riff here. You can hear it in action. So this, you could you could do this both ways. You could do this with a tighter rhythm. If you did this one, now this I did with the gainier kind of setting, but if you did it with a tighter rhythm, it'd sound more like. So you'd be enhancing sort of the genty quality. I wanted this to sound kind of messy and kind of scratchy. You have that. You get that low note coming through. And it, as you apply more gain, it sort of favors those lower notes. It's very satisfying to play. But you'll lose definition on the... You know, and that's where you want to use these things strategically. So as I'm writing, and as I'm recording, I'll experiment with that. And it can change the way a part sounds uh, pretty drastically. Uh, let's talk about this section here. This is kind of cool. This is a little trick. Um, maybe some of you guys are already doing this. But, you know, I, I, I specifically set the split inner coil position as something on my guitar because I like this kind of sound. Works really well on cleans, mid-gain stuff, but it sounds pretty cool on rhythm. You get this very, very scooped sound. And if you use uh, less gain, it's, it's kind of a, a, a nice sound as well. <laughs> So here I'm using a Friedman. Uh, I like the Friedman because it sort of accentuates some of the mid-range harmonics. It like kind of makes those pop out a little bit. I like the way that the uh, 5150 saturates better. So when I want more gain and something to sort of cut through in a more traditional way, that's that's the pick. But if I want something that's like kind of like mid-gain and has that cool sort of spanky quality to it, you know, the Friedman works pretty well there. Now compare that to the bridge. Very cool sound, but still like kind of traditional. This is... Ah, I was messing with that yesterday. Anyways, uh, I'm probably gonna mess this up tracking this. Let's just track it for fun. I 
at the ending, but you know, you get the idea. It sounds pretty cool and it works well with the bass. Like, I like what's going on with the bass. It's because the tones that kind of scooped, it lets the mid range of the bass kind of pop through. Just a cool effect. It's a very different sound. A little uh, trick to play with. And it's another way to sort of just tweak the gain to uh, get the effect that you want out of it. Um, and then finally, so we don't take too long with this. Uh, this section, I know sounds weird, doesn't really fit. <laughs> so we've got cleans here, right? And I've got this patch as well. I believe that I used um, the second position for this. So that's what's going on on this track. Then this side, just doing like a little lead and I'm kind of deliberately not doing the same thing on both sides, so. Anyways, less about these parts. Let's talk about this tone a little bit, because this is a this is a cool little trick and something that, honestly, I wish I'd learned a little sooner. Because I used to think that cleans needed to be absolutely pristine, but a little bit of grit goes a long way. Um, so what's going on here? Let's let's uh, let's just look at the amp itself, using. Um, here, turn off, please. There we go. Using a Sir Badger. I like this amp. It's got, got a good amount of low end. It's just like a very nice, clean, pleasant, pleasant amp model. Wouldn't mind having a real one. Anyways, <laughs> sorry. Um, so, yeah, very pleasant. You'll hear that it is actually tending towards a little bit of uh, breakup, which is kind of a nice thing. I used to shy away from that, but I'm realizing you get this nice warmth from it. I'm in the second position, which will have less gain. You get that sparkly sound. Very nice. We don't need that much. I'm getting a bit of noise, unfortunately. This room is noisy, and this pickup setting does allow for a little bit more noise. And then the next thing is putting a little bit of drive on there. Very light drive. It could be even less. We could bring the tone up a bit. And it just gives this warmth to the chords. Which will not only help it cut through the mix, but it actually doesn't make it sound like it's a dirty sound. Like, your ears in the mix will register this as a clean sound if you listen to this. Like, your ears will probably associate that more with a clean tone than a distorted or overdriven tone. And that's the, the cool little trick. One other thing I'm doing, which is actually making this a little bit more gritty than it would be, is putting a delay. And I'm kind of strategically placing it between the drive and the amp. If it was before, um, you get a bit more of this effect where each uh, repeat would be driven. But right now it's just driving whatever the amp has, which is not that much. So you get this driven so sound on the way in. And then the re repeats are a little bit less uh, dirty, but they are still getting some dirt from the amp. This is strategic. It's sort of the difference before uh, between putting this before the amp and after the amp. And I like I like this kind of setup. Again, you can play around with them, but that's what this sound is. Anyways, uh, that is basically my little spiel on gain and how I like to use it strategically. So, you know what? You guys have been patient. This is a cool little idea. Uh, I'll just play this through now. If you don't want to hear it, you could just stop watching now. But if you want to hear it...
Thanks so much for watching, guys. See you next time.